welcome to the Cynical Developer Live. This is the podcast that helps you improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology, providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. In this four-part mini-series, we're recording in person at Kona Live Europe 2019 in Amsterdam. In this episode, we're at Pocona Live Europe, and we're joined by Tom Takuma and Dimitri Van Overbeck. And we're here today to talk about MySQL, and is it still a thing? Tom has been active in the Unix Systems Administration uh, area for over 10 years. Before joining Pocona, he had worked for several consultancy companies uh, and systems integrators, always focusing and offering solutions based on open source software. Dimitri has been active as an IT professional since 2003, in which he took various roles from internal systems engineering to consulting. Dimitri has worked as an open source software consultant for leading open source software consultancies in Belgium. During his career, Dimitri has become familiar with a broad range of open source solutions with the DevOps philosophies. Whenever he's not glued to his computer screen, he enjoys traveling, cultural activities, basketball, and the great outdoors. So... Thank you for taking time out away from the conference to uh, to come and speak to me today. It's our pleasure, absolutely. So, I mentioned there in the in the intro that um, is my SQL a thing? Now, I come at this from my little Microsoft World bubble that is uh, live and die Microsoft uh, and anybody else. To hell with you. Um, and I, I used to use uh, MySQL back when SQL Express wasn't a thing. And it was simply because it was free. Uh, and as soon as Express came out, it was right, I'm going to use that because that's what they use in enterprise. Um, so I've not touched it for a long, long time. So I think there's going to be a big learning curve in this uh, in this show for, for myself. And... For those people that maybe they were born and bred into my uh, into the Microsoft environment, and maybe they don't know what MySQL is, could you give us a, an overview as to to what it is? We can absolutely. Let's uh, let's start there. And if I may, I'd like to start with like picking up on something that you that you mentioned. You sure. said like you start using MySQL because it's free. I think that's like a, a good entry into into this whole story, I would say. Sure. Um, so MySQL is is open source, right? So it's it's you can actually download it, you can use it for for free. So that's like free as in beer is is just one part of of the whole story, right? So there's sure. there's a lot more to it. It's open source. It's it's released under the uh, GPL. It has a GPL license. So there is a part of like download and use it, but there's also the part of you have access to like everything, like all of the source code that it's it's made up. If there's something that you don't like, you actually have the rights to go in, change that around, commit it back. Like the thing is that you, if you make a change or an enhancement, actually, you have to, you know, spread the word, you have to share it, but you have that ability to do that. And just that fact, that's look at it at scale, I would say. Like if you have one person or a thousand or even, I don't know, a million people doing just that, doing little bits and pieces in the end and all contributing back, you will have like an awesome product, right? And that's yeah, yeah. that's like open source, right? I think that's a that's a good entry uh, into that. So yeah, like definitely I would say MySQL is definitely a a thing it's a <laughs> it's a big thing it's probably there we go Sh- show over <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely done a there. thing done <laughs> yeah so no but I, I wanted to you know just zoom in on 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 that yeah yeah, so, yeah sure. absolutely um my sequel i'm sorry see i see it again my sequel my sql need to be careful here. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah open source wise open source database open source relational database wise i think most people say MySQL. Yeah, yeah and, and also in regards to MSSQL specifically, there are some limitations to it, even in the Express version, um, where in MySQL you don't have those limitations. So essentially you can already think about your program and how you will scale this out 
or how you what type of um, architecture that you will have to set up. You can create high availability setups if you want. You can uh, play with replications. There's a lot of items that you can learn by using MySQL in which that in MSSQL you potentially will need to have a license. So it, it has some added features, I would say, especially sure. for people that, that want to um, develop for something different. Uh, compared to my MSSQL. And yeah. it's very popular with that. Yeah, and um, with with now the the introduction of, of .NET Core, you know, we're using this on a lot of different uh, different platforms. I, uh, I was speaking to Jamie uh, Taylor from the .NET Core podcast, uh, and I was like, look, can you just clarify something? Am I just being naive and ignorant here? You know, do you use uh, MySQL? And he does all his .NET development on a Mac, and he's like, yeah, I do it on Linux. You know, I use MySQL because SQL wouldn't run. Granted, there is now a SQL version, but you know, it, it's not always been the case. So it's um, it, it's definitely there, it's definitely being used, but I think from that, that Microsoft ecosystem, at least now, the general perception is that you just reach for SQL Server because it, it's baked in, isn't it? It's convenient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a convenient you know, sector. You, yeah. We drink the Kool Aid. I think is the uh, is a good term. Uh, well, and it, it it all depends also how where you started with, right? So from my perspective, I always started in the bubble of Linux and right, open okay. source systems. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, open source software. So for me, actually, the step towards Microsoft SQL would not be a logical one. Yeah. Although it's also a good product, right? Uh, yeah, Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sequel, sorry. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, but yeah, that's uh, definitely the case. Sure. So, like I said, I've not used uh, MySQL for uh, or MySQL for uh, for many years. And back when I did, there was only two options or well, three options maybe available to you, uh, which would have been the command line, it would have been Workbench, and it would have been my PHP admin. And they always felt awkward. They were clunky. Uh, and it felt like it was always a barrier to entry. Whereas when I then went and picked up something like uh, Management Studio, that just sort of clicked with me. Maybe maybe I am drinking too much of the Kool-Aid. Uh, but have those applications improved? Are they are they more usable now? You know, what what's the situation there with the, with the tool inside for uh, for MySQL? I think Workbench has improved quite a lot since uh, its conception. Um, in regards to other tools, there are some other technologies available that actually provide you with uh, with access to develop queries uh, towards a MySQL database. Um, I think there's one that's called Heidi SQL also, right. um, an SQL Pro. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, my PHP, my admin, and Workbench are still a big thing, right? So it's still used sure. regularly. Um, um, yeah, in regards to IDE integrations uh, it's a bit of a different i'm not really a developer myself sure. so um don't typically use it but it's uh, it's uh, definitely still uh, i think php my admin is probably still one of the pop most popular tools right. it's, it's a good question yeah indeed it, it's still out there it's still under active development so right. it's also an open source tool uh, it's still there but yeah like definitely they they they've been there and they've been improving like both of them i would say so if you look at mysql workbench um, that's not open source, but there's like a community edition, which is yeah. like free to use. And there's a couple of other tiers that you can uh, that you can, can can use actually. It looks nice and it has a lot of features out of the box, like yeah. start it up, connect to a database. There's like, it's, it's incredible. All of the things that you can see and that you can do like straight off. So I'd say that's, that's still a very good option. Yeah. And there's a, a couple of other ones that we've like seen around a couple of uh, other open source ones and a couple of like, um, or like, paint products that you uh, that you can use so, yeah 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 that's good i think uh out of the two workbench was was usable um and and i preferred to use that and there was a few hosts that uh, that i worked with that uh, i ended up having to use my php admin and um <clears throat> excuse me there was the page refreshes to do anything and it would take forever to get anywhere and you'd be 45 minutes into it and all you've done is select top 10 and you're like come on give me something give me something back that table up give me the backup and it it was it was painful i think um 
and uh, some of the other tooling and some of the other database systems were uh, were a little bit nicer. And maybe back then as well, maybe it was partly my naivety because I was very early in my uh, development career then and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm not saying I know what I'm doing now, but uh, I'm better at faking it. Um, so I think back then um, the, the workbench didn't hold your hand as much as some of the, the other... Uh, the other uh, sort of uh, IDEs and that do so so maybe that's uh, more a reflection on uh, my ability than uh, than the actual application so we we touched on the fact that um that, that my SQL is open source so that anybody can go get it run it use it and it, and it's great whereas Microsoft SQL Server was a a paid product and that was the the trade off when when I looked at it uh, originally, what would be some of the selling points of using MySQL over something like uh, SQL Server? Are you go, Demi? Ah, uh, you go. Okay, okay. Selling points instead of sorry, I need to think about that question actually. But uh, no. Um, um, what is specifically interesting in regards to using MySQL is well, my yeah, MySQL. Oh, still. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, the selling points for MySQL specifically is that it's really feature rich nowadays, um, especially comparing with the previous, uh, well, if you look at the older versions of yeah, MySQL. Yeah. Um, I think from um, a tooling perspective is that it's already enterprise ready, right? So specifically okay. also in regards to stability, functionality, it's enterprise ready, but from a tooling perspective um, and for that perspective, I look maybe a little bit to Percona. There's audit functionality in it. There's functionality in regards to LDAP authentication. Um, all items which are typically quite expensive within uh, the Microsoft SQL world. Um, if you look at it also from my perspective, it's an easy step up, right? So it is something which has a low barrier to start up. Uh, yeah. for, for example, if you have a lot of web applications, the LAMP stack, well, it says it immediately. This, it, it typically, the popularity with the, is actually also due to the LAMP stack, which was Linux, Apache, MySQL, and uh, PHP yeah. at that time. So, um, and that integration, um, that made sure that actually MySQL is something that is like a logic step. There's a lot of integrators and software providers which are also active in the open source space, which will integrate seamlessly within MySQL. So a selling point is that it actually is something which is a, some sort of a standard. Well, inside, well, inside the Microsoft SQL, you will see typically that also with software vendors which create payable versions of their product. So if you look then at the totality of the product, it becomes very expensive for companies adapting those products while with MySQL it becomes something like a, a lower threshold right especially for organizations in either a, um, a startup phase but also enterprises who want to get off expensive licensing policies yeah, actually yeah. right so um, and also the knowledge set of uh, well there are good MySQL DBAs out there and they're all focused on that open source and free software perspective so they're also used with yeah they're used in using the specific tools that are available to them um, which are then also open source so again you know it's the complete tree of freedom and open source perspective I don't know it's uh, yeah. it, okay again I'm maybe a little bit uh, we're biased, bias, absolutely. Right? So, uh, it, it's but, about that, right? Yeah, the whole indeed. idea of open source. Um, I, I want to mention about you know maybe having a thousand people doing things, but it's about sharing the knowledge and actually benefiting of all of that and all all of the expertise and and everything that is going on. That's what open source mm -hmm. is about. Share, sharing is caring, as they say. So definitely, there is that, um, and. Enterprise ready. Um, I think Dimi, you also you already mentioned that. Like feature wise, I think historically people went to enterprise because there were certain features that enterprise software would uh, offer. Were there, I would say, right. like all of these like open source mm -hmm. products, tooling. Um, it, it's all there. They're, they're offering the same kind of uh, things. I'm thinking about security, for example. There has been a very big focus over the last couple of years on security. Well, you know, you can have the same thing. 
um, in uh, MySQL. Um, if you look at, at some specific things, um, you know, there's MySQL, like the community edition. Um, there's a couple of folks because it's open source. There's a, a couple of flavors, you could say, to it. So we got a couple of other things. Percona server is one of them. We got like very specific uh, security features in there and all the plugin, for example. So mm-hmm. all of the enhancements, we can put it in and we can like spread the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it also building something based on MySQL also makes it in a way more flexible because within Microsoft SQL, there's typically the, well, you use more sort of um, store procedures functionalities, which are also existing in MySQL, but typically for web development um, focused applications, there's more focus on the application perspective and they yeah. really use the RDB mess to structure, uh, well, to get the structured data in. Um, for MySQL um, specifically, um, I would say also if you look at what currently is being run in the biggest websites in the world, it's typically MySQL or it's a flavor yeah, or yeah. it's um, or it's uh, PostgreSQL right now. So it's so I typically would say that there the the good point about it is that even at real extensive scaled out situations, there typically is an example with with MySQL or with yeah, with yeah. Uh, Postgres and those people happily share their information and their their knowledge even at conferences like this or at FOSDEM at open source conferences yeah. that all over the world so it makes it makes it easier in my opinion because I, I remember um, in the past I worked on DB2 for a short period of time um, and um, getting it to work and to be optimized properly you had to run through manuals of documentation while Nowadays, all that information for MySQL, for example, is so publicly accessible that it's easy to move towards yeah. um, something like MySQL. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there's there's two big uh, points that you made there that tend to come up from, from clients time and time again, at, at least through, through my career, and it's that they wanted us to use SQL Server because it's enterprise ready, which you've said now that MySQL is enterprise ready, which we'll come back to uh, in, in a second, but also the security side of it, that it was seen because it was open source software, that it wasn't secure. And I think that's a, a definite mind, mindset shift that, that people have to do. And I think people are going through that process, but um, I think it's a difficult one um, because they see uh, the likes of open source software and they're like, well, what happens if it stops being supported? What happens if it changes? You know, uh, what happens if uh, some big corporate comes in and, and buys it and changes it, and 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 then they start charging for it, and it's more than than the other thing? I think there's a lot of um, a lot of worry, a lot of scare um, scaremongering of the uh, of the unknown there. And uh, like like you mentioned, uh, that it was enterprise ready, and it's run some of the biggest websites uh, online. In my entire naivety, I hadn't even given this a second thought. While I was walking around looking at some of the vendors, you know, and there's, there's sites out there like Slack is is the, their back end is um, is is MySQL, Booking.com is MySQL, mm-hmm. um, and all of a sudden you sort of think to yourself, well, if they're using it, why aren't I using it? Mm-hmm. You know, um, because. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot cheaper to run than than, than paying for uh, the the costs of, of SQL Server in the cloud, which sort of takes us on to my next question, which is, can I get my SQL in the cloud, or do I have to go and run my own dedicated server or spin up a VM or something and install it on there? If you choose so, you can, right? So yes, um, so there are... Um so, for example, um, in the big Amazon ecosystem, there is RDS available running MySQL. Okay. Um, their blend of MySQL, which is the highly optimized version, Aurora is also um, MySQL based. Um, they, inside the Google space, you have Google Cloud SQL, and you have uh, which is MySQL based, right, okay. and you have even for the Microsoft adapts around us, you have <laughs> Microsoft Azure. SQL or uh, no Microsoft Azure database for SQL, which right, is MySQL okay. uh, for 
well, I'm sorry, I'm bad in names. <laughs> Microsoft Azure database for MySQL, which is actually the open source, uh, well, a MySQL flavor of uh, of, right. uh, of of their databases. So platform. are they all forks of, of, of MySQL? Well, typically they do implementations, right? So they're using normally the community edition and they optimize it specifically for their use case in their cloud platform. Sure. Um, so um, especially if you look at Aurora, it will be, uh, it takes some features, it modifies it quite heavily from a code base, but it's still as uh, completely compatible to the, yeah. in, in regards to working with it. Um, but yeah, so it's it's uh, their blend of it. So they don't specifically open source their implementation, sure. right? But it's uh, it's their blend of it. Yeah, yeah. I would say this is just providing options, right? Like we always um, are a bit afraid of like vendor lock-in. Probably everyone maybe is a bit. And if you look at what's what's going on um, at Procona, we we, we kind of say, okay, we're like in the multiverse right now, like yep. multi-cloud. Like there's there's no one at this point who's like focusing on on one specific technology. Everyone is running bits and pieces of of at least a couple of things. So we have that. We have multi-cloud. Uh, we're looking at. Uh, we have hybrid solutions. And all of that is possible because we are able to run MySQL just about everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You, on your local machine, um, data center hosting infrastructure as a service, database as a service, um, you know, in some container somewhere on a Kubernetes setup, it doesn't matter. It will run there and it's gonna be okay. Okay, great stuff. So, so you mentioned that there are a lot of different flavors uh, in the cloud of, of, of MySQL. I mean, are there now different flavors as well for installations of MySQL, or are you always going to be installing just MySQL? Well, typically you want to install Percona Server, of course, but uh, I would say it depends. No, essentially, essentially, yeah, no. So essentially, you have multiple, multiple, you have multiple solutions, right? So you, there's a tree, I would say the biggest flavors inside the MySQL space, which of course is MySQL Community Edition. Um, and I'm talking currently about the free options, right? So the MySQL Community Edition, which is the standard, the upstream, as we call it. Okay. Um, then you have um, MariaDB, which is um, a, a sort of a fork of MySQL. They have um, moved a little bit away from it, right? So a um, they're a spin-off indeed. And they're actually also, um, well, it was launched by the, one of the owners of MySQL in the past, right? right so it's okay. a, so, but essentially it started off um, as a real fork and now it's really spinning off towards uh, their, their own product. Um, and it's also completely MySQL compatible in regards to the, how you interact with it, right? So, um, and then you have um, our version of it, um, which is Percona Server, um, which is a which is actually following the upstream. It's more like a distribution of the of of MySQL, which is highly optimized and also is focused on integrating enterprise features into it. Um, there's a last bit that I think is mentionable, uh, which is also, of course, the the, the payable subscription yeah. uh, based licensing based uh, solution, which is called MySQL Enterprise, which is also focused at um, adding features which are required uh, towards the enterprise uh, integration, sure. like uh, yeah. audit. Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions, is that there is a enterprise version or an enterprise version, mm -hmm, sorry, mm -hmm. of, 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 of MySQL. What, what does that actually give you over uh, the community edition? Or is it just support contracts and things like that? Um, that, that's part of it, I would say. Yeah. But um, what you mentioned before, like being enterprise ready, there's there's a couple of like features uh, that already came up when we talk about security. Yep. And uh, there's a couple of things, well, quite a bit of things that have to do with like the management of, of that database. There's like, these are the extra things that you get if you go MySQL. Um, enterprise so that's sure. that's the extras that you get over there if we then have a look at um, the um, the free options the open source options um, I think I'm actually quite confident to say that for most of these things there is an alternative um, available and I'm only talking about like Procona server so there, there's definitely of course a couple of things um, that we have added 
um, like again security um, auditing wise like aud the audit plugin has always been a thing um, that was a thing of the, the MySQL enterprise so we got like an, an open source version of that one too which give you that um, those options uh, to configure so that's that and when it comes to management there's a lot of things available a lot of, of open source tools that are out there um, a couple of them are also being like packaged and all readily uh, available so I think at the end of the day we're like you know at the same level there it's a different yeah, approach yeah. like it, it will be more built in um, if you look at MySQL Enterprise um, and on the other end like all of the functionality it's available and sure. it's there so you, so Pocono is out there rocking the boat for the uh, the enterprise edition of, uh, of MySQL and saying there's all these features that you're going to charge for we're going to give them away for free <laughs> Well, yeah, we have Procona as a real service-oriented orga organization, and we try to improve the community product to make sure that it's um, actually enterprise-ready, right? Because why would you be deprived of those types of features if if uh, if they are actually necessary for your integration? Yeah. It actually lowers adoption of MySQL mm -hmm. in the world, um, and it makes complete sense for us to invest in that. Um, yeah. So the next the next question is. We've sort of covered it, skirted around it by saying people like Slack use it. But um, what is MySQL like now for scaling and for speed? You know, it, it, is that ever a a problem now, or you know, have it, has the community had to put in some sort of layer above it to deal with that, or, or does it, do you get all that uh, nice stuff out of the box with uh, with MySQL now? I would say it depends, but no, <laughs> it's, uh, so I think I think you know scaling infrastructure is always a problem. If you look at Oracle DB or Microsoft SQL, it will always be a problem in regards to how you will scale the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. It will cost you money essentially, um, or work um, or man work uh, man, man hours, right? So um, inside uh, MySQL, there is definitely the options to scale up. Um, especially, it's easy to scale out the reads. Traffic, right? So potentially mm -hmm. by using replication sure. or by using Galera uh, clustering technology. Um, essentially, in regards to scaling out writes, that's always a bit more of a difficult item. So um, people typically invest in optimizing their code accordingly, making sure that they can uh, well avoid sharding before beforehand. But sharding essentially is also possible, but it requires you to define yourself, your logic that you want yeah. to use, and also the integration. So it's a bit more complex on that level. There are some layers that exist inside the MySQL ecosystem um, that promise you that functionality. However, there's no magical unicorn for this, right? So it's it's scaling out infrastructure. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's always tricky, but I would say that that's comparable with all type of enterprise vendors. Um, there's no easy way to do it. Typically. It's a fair point. Like, there's, it's not like there's a, a one out of the box solution that will just, you know, solve every scaling problem yeah. that you have. If if you need to go there, well, then okay, you'll need to have a look at adoption. And now again, the, the good thing about this, so there's a couple of things in in MySQL, of course, that will facilitate that, or a couple of approaches that you can take if you, you know. At the end of the day, you'll you'll have to you need to have a look at like uh, the the full picture, and you know how do I make this transparent for my applications? There's a lot more that will uh, come into play, but there's quite a bit of like open source tools and projects that help you out. I'm just you know thinking out loud that we we got like Proxy SQL, which literally is a, a proxy for SQL. So like man in the middle at some point that's yeah. the wrong wording but sitting there and it kind of distributes the reads and the writes to some backends that you configure um, when it comes to high availability there's a couple of like fantastic tools mm -hmm. that help you out managing all of that so yeah and, and the thing is is that and sometimes you see um, big software vendors or even small you know small organizations promise everything yeah and you always see the the typical Batman driving uh, driving a unicorn thing uh, mentality, uh, but it's essentially it's it's still hard, right? So it's still a, it's a, it's all it's a hard problem to really scale out, and especially if we're talking about uh, 
massive workloads and uh, yeah, yeah. and it's issues that and but the thing is is that because it's so adaptable that people can actually create their own solutions so for example uh, Facebook worked heavily on RocksDB um, we did the implementation for, uh, with my rocks in, in Percona server. There, there are options and functionalities and they can be integrated in for real scaling issues. Um, in typical workloads, it's le typically less of an issue and it will scale perfectly fine in the situation it is. It all starts with having a decent configuration and making sure that your workload and schema, schema is optimized. At that point, MySQL can handle massive amounts of data. But right. if you're if you're um, if 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 that's not the case, well, I would say focus first on those things, and yeah. then afterwards look at uh, scaling out or scaling up, depending on what you can do. Right? So yeah, yeah, and I guess then if you if your excuse for not using it is well, I've got too much data, it it, it won't be able to handle it. Um, that's that's not even an argument. You know, if you, if you if you put your data in there and it's slow. It's probably how you've put your data in there, and it's probably down to your bad design more than more than anything. Yeah, it, it's also making the right choices, right? So it's don't use it for well. For example, um, if you're going to use MySQL as a full, full text search yeah. system, there's other solutions which are more adapted for that. Um, um, or as um, for example, a NoSQL database. Well, focus on a NoSQL technology. Sure. It's possible to do it. Uh, typically inside MySQL, but it's maybe not really specifically adapted for that, right? Sure. So it's not focused on that. And I yeah. still believe in myself personally, in that uh, that <laughs> MySQL that you need to use the tool that that actually yeah. is meant for it. Yeah, being a bit of a purist, there, it's a relational database and use it as such. Because that that something I've seen out uh, on the stands is no SQL plus MySQL, mm -hmm. um, and it is um, MySQL also trying to be a document database as well as being yeah, they, um, a relational they, database? They made, they made a real nice implementation of it, right? So, and I think it's definitely worth it to try it out and see if it fits your needs. Um, but it's, uh, again, you know, it's adding features and it's normal sure. because it's requested also by the community. Um, but I think also, well, you know, you need to try it out and see actually if it fits in your workload yeah. and if it's actually scalable enough for you. Because there's other tools that might work for guys for for them um, that might be more adapted to it. But yeah, yeah. again, it's it might be also really easy for them to implement it to get if they're used to working in sure. those types of with those types of technologies like SQL, well, with MySQL. It makes sense to move to keep that in a document store for them. Yeah. Yeah. So if the listeners wanted to learn more about MySQL and you know, wanted to find out a little bit more in depth than, than what we've sort of just glanced over in this show, where would you suggest they go and they go and have a look? Oh, IT, the internet. Oh, that, that's yeah, a good start. That, that, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good pointer, right? There, there's definitely a couple of places um, that you can go look. I think the first one is uh, planetmysql.org. Um, if I'm not mistaken, which kind of... I actually don't know if it's planetmysql.org. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's yeah. a bookmark. That's, yeah, bookmarks. That's, that's <laughs> the, pain, the pain these days. Anyway, it's like, you know, it consolidates um, a lot of other blogs uh, into one. It's like a feed. It's, it's incredible, okay. the amount of information that you can find there. Um, and then, of course, I have to say the, the Percona blog uh, itself is, is also full of like a lot of information. We, we not only put um, information about like MySQL or new things that, that we're releasing, uh, there's a lot of like how-to uh, blogs on there too, which is like fantastic. I think everyone at some point starting out with some technology or even if you've, you've been using it for quite some time, you ask Google about how to do a specific thing or how to solve a specific problem. Um, if we're looking at MySQL, there, there's probably a very big chance that you will land onto one of the, uh, the Percona uh, blogs that we have available. So a lot of information available, and I would say those are at least yeah. definitely two yeah. good uh, starting points. Awesome, yeah. So I'll, I'll get those linked up and, and put into the show notes. So uh, anybody out there listening doesn't need to, to scramble and, and trying to work out if it's... Uh, my my sequel or my sql planet or um <laughs> or some other thing um i'll i'll do the hard work for you and i'll i'll find out what that is and, and stick that in there 
But uh, we're just about out of time, so that just leaves me to say uh, thank you to you both for uh, for taking time away from the conference to uh, to come and talk to me uh, today. Been my pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you for having yeah. us. Thank, thank you. you very much, and uh, thank you to everybody out there for listening. Uh, to the cynical developer. I'm James Sludder, and you've been listening to Tom and Dimitri talking about MySQL, not MySQL. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links, show notes for each episode. And if you enjoy this episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, iTunes, Stitch, whatever it is, and help the cynical developer to reach more developers around the globe. 